Hey, how are you doing? Welcome to this video. In this lesson, we're going to set up a simple video conferencing feature in our Bubble app to show you how it's done. So without wasting time, let's dive in. All right, so to begin, I'm going to be cloning the page that we used in the previous lesson, which is called Agora Stream. And I'll create a new page called Agora Conference. And we are cloning the Agora Stream page because we'll be using most of its elements. So I'll click on Create. So now that the page has been created, I'll now rearrange the elements in a way that's best suited for a conference call. So normally in a conference call, you'll be able to see your webcam as well as the webcam of the guest that has joined the conference call. So for that, I'll basically take this Agora element and I'll minimize it like so. And then we'll position this group right here. And let's bring these buttons down like that. And then we'll position this right here. And then perhaps we can just increase the size of this like so. And here is where your own webcam will be shown. And then within this group right here, this is where we'll show the webcam of the guest. So I think to make things more clearer, I'll add text labels for this webcam as well as this webcam. So here I'll basically position this right at the bottom of this Agora RTC element. And we'll make it the same width, like so. Then maybe we can just decrease the height like that. So here I'll say user webcam. And we can style this a bit. So I'll position the font in the middle. And let's center the text vertically. And then for the background color, let's click on this blue. And let's make the text white so that it's more visible. Like so. I think that's fine. And now I'll simply duplicate this. And I'll place it right here. And then I'll increase the width like so. But then now this should be for the guest. Like that. And then we'll also position these buttons like so, then let's bring this one on top, just like that. All right, and an important thing that we need to remember is to configure the Agora RTC element. So for conference calling, we'll need to change this to real-time call, and we can leave that as host. So this is where your webcam will show. And then the next thing, we can just change this field to conference name instead of stream name. I'll say conference, like so. And then now we want to have a placeholder that will be displayed when the camera has not yet connected. So we can use this placeholder. So I'll just duplicate this. And then we'll just copy the dimensions of this Agora RTC element. So it has a width of 243 and a height of 150. So I'll come here. Then I'll change the width as well as the height. All right, perfect. So let's just position this right in the center like so. I'll just center it horizontally as well as vertically. And then perhaps we can just change the roundness to zero so that we have sharp corners. And now I'll want to position it at the same position on the x-axis and y-axis of this element. So I'll come here and I'll paste that in there. And this one should be 135. All right, cool. And then we actually want this to be placed at the back. So we'll say send to back. So that the go RTC element shows above that placeholder. All right, so I'll also change the corners of this to be sharp corners. I'll change it to zero. And now we want to place a group that will show the webcam of the guest. And so I will go ahead and add a group. And we want it to be the same 
size as this group placeholder right here. So it's 570 by 350. So I'll come here and change the dimensions like so. And this should be guest webcam like so. And then obviously again, we wanna change the position to match this one. So it should be this 80 as the Y axis. And then we can actually give it a white background just so that we know that it's on top since it's pure white. And then most importantly, we need to change the ID attribute. So the ID attribute should be the same as this name right here. So it says remote users. I'll copy that and I'll come here and we will add that name remote users. So by doing that, we ensure that this group called guest webcam will show the webcam of anyone who joins into this call. So if maybe you cannot find this ID attribute field, you'll need to enable it and you can do that by going to the settings tab and then here click on general. And then after scrolling down, you should see this checkbox that says expose the option to add an ID attribute to HTML elements. So this is the checkbox you want to click in order to enable this field, which is called ID attribute. All right, perfect. So let's now go ahead and edit the workflows. So I'll go to the workflow tab. And within this event, we can delete this action that changes the state because we won't be using it as much within this lesson. Right, so we'll actually be using a different method in order to hide or show the buttons right here. So we'll get back to that in just a moment. So now let's go ahead and edit this event. So for a conference call, we actually don't need to generate an Agora token. So we can delete this. And immediately we can see that we have some errors. So all we have to do is just clear this expression and we should be good to go. And just to clarify things further, let's change this to conference. And we should also change the button names. So coming here, I'll say conference. And then for this button as well, change it to conference. All right, perfect. Okay, so I'll go back to the workflow tab. And again, we don't need this, so I'll delete that. And now let's go ahead and add a new action, which is go to page. And we basically want to go to the same page that we are currently on, which is called Agora Conference. So I will simply click on that. And then here we can check on this checkbox that says send more parameters to the page. And then we can add another parameter. And the name of this parameter will be room name. And then we can give it a value. So we can give it the same value as the input field. So we can click on that. And this action should only be executed only when this parameter on the page URL is empty. So we can add a condition right here. So I'll click here and then I'll search for URL. And then we can say get data from page URL. And then here we can basically give this parameter the same name as this one. So I'll copy this. And then I'll come here and then I'll paste that in there. And I'll close it and I'll say is empty. So only when this parameter on the page is empty, this action should be executed. And actually, this should be the first step within the event. So I'll place it right here. So what this basically means is that when a person starts a conference call, we're gonna go ahead and add a new parameter on the page URL, which will have the name of the conference call. So the reason for this is that this will allow the person that has the same page URL to join the call that has the same name. So of course, this is used by guests who want to join in the same conference call. So that means that when the page is loaded, we need to check whether or not the page URL has a room name. And if it does, we want to join the person that's using that URL into the conference call that's using the same name. So for that, we need to add another event. 
and this one should be when the page is loaded. So we need to add an action that will join the user. So I will come here and we can basically copy this action, then paste it right here. And of course, this action should only be executed when the page parameter named room name is not empty. So we can say get data from page URL and we're going to give that URL the same name and we're going to say not empty. So when this parameter is not empty, we're basically going to connect the person to the same conference call that uses the same name. So now that we have set up this condition, we also need to change this field right here. So within this field, we basically want to collect the room name of the conference call. So to do that, we can click on insert dynamic data, and then let's click on get data from page URL. And then of course we can insert room name and there you go. And this is pretty much all the settings that we need to do within the workflow tab. All right, so now we can go ahead and edit the conditions of these buttons so that we can hide or show them based on certain conditions. So since we won't be using the state, we want to actually check whether or not the page URL is empty or not empty, and that will determine if the button should be displayed. So for example, let's click on get data from page URL. And of course we can insert the parameter name like so. So when this page parameter is not empty, which means that we have a conference call name within that page URL, then this button should be visible because you want to allow the person to be able to leave that conference. So we can clear this expression and copy this one. And then we can say when the page parameter is in fact empty, then this button should not be visible. So now we can go to the start conference button and let us remove this and we'll paste this in there. So now when the page parameter is not empty, then we should hide this button. But then when the page parameter is empty, then we want to show this button. All right, so I'll basically position this back right here. All right, and then as the last step, let's just make sure that we don't have a background style for this group so that the placeholder behind it can be visible. So now we can go ahead and test out this feature. So I'll click on preview. All right, so to start the conference call, I will give it a name. So I will say test. And then I'll click on start conference. All right, so as you can see, I'm connected using my webcam. And I also have a virtual camera connected as a guest, which is playing a pre-recorded video just to show you how it works. So as you can see, it's working pretty nicely. So I will exit as the guest and I'll also exit from this webcam. And that's basically how it's done. So if you want to try it out, simply give the conference call a name, click on start conference, and you will see that the page URL will have a page parameter with the name of the conference call. And you can use the same page URL to connect to this conference call using another device in order to see how it works. So as you can see, it was very, very easy to set up a conference call using the Agora plugin. And that my friend brings us to the end of this lesson. So we can now move along to the next one.